Hello everybody! Welcome to this third video of this video series about installing Open Media Vault on the Western Digital Sentinel DX4000. Today we will gonna have a look at the serial connection to the serial port on the mainboard and we will have a deeper look into the BIOS and especially about its boot settings. In my first video I shortly described the connection between the J23 connector on the mainboard of the NAS and an USB to serial adapter. Maybe a bit too short because I got some comments that the explanation could be a little bit more in detail and I would like to take the opportunity to do so. So the first pad on the J23 connector is the ground pad and has to be connected with the ground on the USB to serial adapter. Um, that's necessary to decide which power level on the data line is actually a 1 and a 0 so that you can transmit data. Um, the second pad on the J23 connector is the transmit line, so data, mainly text and characters, is transmitted to the receive pin of the USB to serial adapter. The third pad is the receive pad of the mainboard and receives data that is transmitted from the USB to serial adapter via its transmit port, so mainly your keyboard inputs like the up or down key or the return key. So that pin might not be necessary if you have still connected a USB keyboard to your NAS and make your inputs via this keyboard. And the fourth pad is the power line at 3.3 volts but I don't use it in this case because I use the internal power supply of the USB to serial adapter and therefore connected this power supply with a yellow jumper to the VCC pin of the USB to serial adapter. For the next step we have to use PuTTY or another serial monitor. I'm using PuTTY for Windows. If you want to have PuTTY you go to the website putty.org. There you find the download and to the download for your operating system. So I use this one. After that you can start it. So you have to choose serial. For me it's COM6. You have to look the COM port up for your adapter. It might change. So just have a quick look at your device manager and there you find the number of your COM port associated with your USB to serial adapter. The speed will be 150,200 and with that you can open and at that point you start your NAS. So at the bottom right you see the uh, hex code for the boot operations. And when asked press delete on your USB keyboard. So here we press delete and there we are in the BIOS of our Western Digital Sentinel DX4000. So as we see, we have an American Megatrends BIOS, we have an EFI based BIOS, or we can choose system language between English and France, I'll stick with English. Um, and here we have a quick look around go to the advanced settings and there we will have a look at our IDE configurations. So here you can set up the setup port, can set up a RAID, but I have no hard disk present yet because I first want to install Open Media Vault and afterwards we will insert our hard drives and then we can choose if we want to have a software RAID or if we want to have a hardware RAID. Uh, we will see that later on. So another interesting point is this Intel integrated graphics device and here we can see that we have an LVDS output and at the bottom we can choose if we want to have an LVDS output or if we want to have embedded display port. So you have also some USB configurations as you can see here I have two drives one with the Debian image one to install Debian onto a keyboard and a hub and I have a super IO chip. This is important later on for controlling the fan based on the temperatures. Here we have the hardware monitor you can see the temperatures 
and the fan speed and the voltages. And under this point we can set the settings for this serial redirection and I'll change the terminal type from ANSI to UTF-8 then it will look much nicer. So We have a look at the host bridge. Here we can set up some VGA configurations, but as we don't have a VGA output, it doesn't really matter to us. The SAS bridge is quite interesting to me because we have, we should have 12 USB ports and six PCI Express ports, but none of them I found on the motherboard. So if they are there, that would be very interesting to address or to use them. So, going to the boot settings, here we can see we have all the different boot options available. And as the BIOS only boots into a USB device, if no other boot option is available, I will disable every other options. And as you see here, I've already have installed Debian and therefore it is in our boot options, but we will do it again. And uh, for now we will disable every other boot option. No network boot, no Windows boot, and that one neither. And we don't want to boot uh, in BIOS mode from our USB stick, we just want to use our UEFI boot. So that look good. No password. We want to save changes. Yes. So and down here we can choose our boot override and we will select our USB thumb drive in UEFI mode to install Debian. Yes, we want to. So here we do a reboot. So let's go another time into the BIOS just to show you the different look. As you see it looks much nicer, um, but I won't do any changes here as we have already set everything up and quit without savings. So here we are in Grump. As you see the first menu entry is the one we have set up in the Grump CFG file and uh, all the commands have been set up correctly and we can continue our installation of Debian but that will be the next video so thanks for watching and uh, goodbye